cranes are perhaps Europe's most charismatic and spectacular birds. They're famous for exuberant dancing and for remarkable mass migrations between breeding sites in northern Europe and the warm south. In late autumn, around 150,000 cranes cross the Pyrenees to reach their winter headquarters in central Spain. Wherever they're found, these intelligent, highly sociable birds are well known and much revered. Cranes are not just continental though. They've been making a slow but steady comeback to East Anglia and cope with the worst of British weather year round. But as their future success is far from assured, plans are in place for a major reintroduction scheme, the Great Crane Project in the West Country. Nigel Jarrett has honed techniques for rearing healthy cranes at the Wild Fowl and Wetlands Trust at Slimbridge. The aim of the Great Crane Project is to establish at a new site a resident population of at least 25 breeding pairs of cranes to give the birds a much stronger chance of continued survival in, in the UK. The partnership comprises WWT, the RSPB and the Penstorp Conservation Trust and uh, we're bringing all of the skills of the different organisations together to bring back an iconic species. With major funding from Viridor Credits, Damon Bridge will oversee crane releases in Somerset, liaising with the project's partners. By late spring 2009, detailed plans for a pre-release enclosure are taking shape. Returning cranes to the Levels Moors is very significant. To get this bird back and breeding in Somerset will be an incredible achievement and hopefully will reconnect a lot of people um, with, with their environment and with this wetland habitat. Crane remains have actually been found in the lake villages at Glastonbury and Mere. It's incredible to think that cranes have been here from prehistory right up to 400 years ago and this project's going to put them back, bring them back where they used to be. We know that cranes were widespread in our country, they disappeared as a result of hunting, but also at that time a lot of our wetlands were lost. The Great Crane Project plans to add momentum to a natural return that began in the Norfolk Broads. John Buxton nurtured the return of wild cranes here and he's been filming their progress ever since the first ones arrived some 30 years ago. I think when the first ones came in 79, they didn't actually nest or look like it the first year, but they went through the motions of uh, reacting to each other. And the excitement of seeing them courting, which they did from here, was very exciting indeed. I was thrilled. This was the first crane pair that attempted to breed in the UK for four centuries. They first nested in 1981, but, as in many future years, no chicks survived. But in 1982, one chick made good progress and reached full size. I think the most exciting thing that I saw here was when the first chick actually flew. And my feeling was that, you know, this is marvellous. This small Norfolk population, though, grew very slowly and only four young fledged in the first 16 years of breeding attempts. Today, their range is gradually expanding in the east with the help of many conservation bodies. And small flocks now feed on Norfolk marshland in winter. But with just a dozen or so British breeding pairs in total, the Great Crane Project is needed to boost numbers to a secure level. Captive rearing techniques for cranes were perfected at Pensthorpe Conservation Trust in Norfolk and here at WWT in Gloucestershire. For the last three years, the pupils that have been reared in crane schools have actually come from private collections. We collected them as eggs and then we transported them in portable incubators to Slimbridge. We'd be doing the same thing 
for real, rearing birds for release, but those eggs will come from wild nests. Wild eggs will be sourced in Germany, where the last batch of captive eggs came from, which gave Nigel a long road trip. I think it took us about 14 hours to, to travel the six or 700 miles um, over land and sea. And just to come back to Slimbridge and just know that it was a nice warm incubator waiting was a great relief. This egg has been incubated for 28 days and as you can see, it started to hatch. It's really important that I get it to a, a very humid incubator. This egg will probably hatch in the next 24 hours or so. Wild cranes are truly devoted parents and even help their young to hatch if necessary. Safe in cosy incubators, captive chicks emerge under Nigel's care. Normally the birds would be under their parents' wing and the physical contact between mum's feathers and its down will cause it to fluff up and then it can start keeping itself warm. With artificial heat, captive birds also perk up quickly. When a crane chick has hatched, it doesn't really feel hunger. It's got a belly full of yolk. Uh, the parents, however, have to start teaching the animal to feed and they, they show extreme patience in offering food morsels to the baby, including fragments of eggshell full of calcium. And uh, what better can you really offer a young animal that needs to grow long, straight and strong legs? At WWT's breeding centre, Nigel is joined by Damon and both wear grey smocks to hide their human body shape from impressionable young cranes. Amazing. This is a chick that I hatched this morning. Oh, right. yeah. Perhaps you could uh, give it its first feed. Excellent. Mm. Fantastic, dear me. You're a natural, <laughs> a natural crane mum. You've got the legs yeah. for it. I just think they're just so vulnerable. Yeah. Just imagine seeing something like this, that size. Mm on the Somerset levels and those in four or five years' time. Yeah. The challenge is to ensure that chicks survive and grow, but there's still a long way to go.